Amen, amen. As women of God, we have to stand up. Um, a word here, it says, God is releasing his power through women so that they will make the lives of those in their hemisphere of influence. So today, whatever we are doing and every presentation that we're listening to, as women, we are influencing others with how we do. With no further ado, I will go into our next presenter, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus at age six, fill with the Holy Ghost at age 14. Member of the Pentecostal Gospel Temple, 111 Windward Road. Past Secretary of the Jamaica Pentecostal Union Youth Arm. Participated in various church activities over the years. Sunday school teacher, choir member, both youth and adult, training officer, youth secretary and president, ordained Minister 2008, currently the coordinator for the present for the presenter on PGT's radio program, Morning Dew, Wednesdays at 5:45 a.m. on Love 10 on 101. A graduate of the Wilmers High School for Girls. UWI Bachelor of Science in Econ Economy and University of Leicestershire, MSc Human Resources, Development and Performance Management. A training facilitator at the Management Institute for National Development, Government Training Arm. She says, I'm interested in the development of the whole man. Favorite scripture, Psalms 138, verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth him. With no further ado, her name suits her personality. Her name suits exactly what she exemplifies. Let us welcome Naomi Jackson Forrester to the podium this afternoon. As she speaks, let us welcome her. Thank you very much, ladies, and if there are any brothers out there, praise the Lord. It's good to be on with you. I've been having a wonderful time all day just listening to the various speakers. You have been most inspiring and saying congratulations to my sister, Lisa, who um, is the convener of this conference. And thank you to all our various moderators and presenters. You have just been wonderful. I want to get right into our session. I know we are running a little behind, so let us get going. So blessings to all. And today we're gonna to be speaking about the Proverbs 31 woman in the 21st century. Now I know most of us are very familiar with this particular passage of scripture, so I'll just quickly go through it at this time. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. An excellent woman, and I'm starting from verse 10 to the 31st verse. An excellent woman, one who is spiritual, capable, intelligent, and virtuous. Who is he who can find her? Her value is more precious than jewels, and her worth is far above rubies or pearls. The heart of her husband trusts in her with secure confidence, and he will have no lack of gain. She comforts, encourages, and does him only good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with willing hands in delight. She is like the merchant ships abounding with treasure. She brings her household's food from far away. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and assigns tasks to her maids. 
she considers a feel before she buys or accepts it, expanding her business prudently. With her profits, she plants fruitful vines in her vineyard. She equips herself with strength, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given task and makes her arms strong. She sees that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out, but it burns continually through the night. She is prepared for whatever lies ahead. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her, her hands holds a spindle as she spins wool into thread for clothing. She opens and extends her hand to the poor, and she reaches out her filled hands to the needy. She does not fear the snow for her household, for all in her household are clothed in expensive scarlet or wool. She makes for herself coverlets, cushions, and rugs of tapestry. Her clothing is linen, pure and fine, and purple wool. Her husband is known in the city's gates when he sits down among when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen garments and sells them and supplies sash sashes to the merchants. Strength and dignity are her clothing and her position is strong and secure. And she smiles at the future, knowing that she and her family are prepared. She opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom and teaches, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue, giving counsel and instruction. She looks well to how things go in her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired. Her husband also, and he praises her saying, many daughters have done nobly and well with the strength of character that is steadfast in goodness, but you excel them all. Charm and grace are deceptive and superficial beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord, reverently worshiping, obeying, serving, and trusting him with all filled respect, she shall be praised. Give her of the, pro give her of the product of her hands and praise. let her own works praise her in the gates of the city. Amen. And here ends the reading of the word. And so this morning, this afternoon, we are very happy just to be sharing on the Proverbs 31 woman. I know this is a well-known passage of scripture, and we'll just be picking out some high points from it to share in this woman's conference. Now, Proverbs 31 is attributed to a King Lemuel. And it's a name that is thought to be the poetic name for King Solomon. The author shared some lessons that were taught to him by his mother. She taught him to be a leader, not to be give to not to give his strength to women, nor to drink excessively, to be drunk, to defend the poor and those without a voice. She also taught him the, about the qualities he should look for in a wife. Now, um, we just heard in our previous wife. speaker speak about leaders and the type of leader that we should be as women. And this was geared towards a man. Obviously, he was to pay attention to what he was doing. And even as leaders, and I don't want to go over that point, but as leaders, we ought to be very careful how we give our strength to 
our children to other people. Sometimes, you know, we are so taken up with those that we are leading that we forget to care for ourselves. And if you think about what some of the previous speakers said, we ought to be very careful how we take care of our bodies and how we are looking out for ourselves, not to be given to drinking. Unfortunately, a number of women have taken up smoking and drinking. And we may say, oh, um, we are, we are Christian ladies and we are not into that. But there are some women I can tell you who are into our drinking. Some, it might not be alcohol. It might be coffee. It might be, you know, that little wine that we're taking a lot of that making us, you know, out of our on control of ourselves. And so we ought to be very careful about what we are doing. And we ought to be giving a defense to the poor and those without a voice. Speak up when you see others are down. And so the question I'd like to ask us quickly, what are we teaching our children or the others that we influence? It might be young people, it might be older people. Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 7 asks us to love the Lord with all our hearts, our soul, our minds, and our bodies. And we really want to be teaching. And it, it goes on to talk about what we teach our children, what we tell them as we sit down. Do we spend time to speak to our children? Do we spend time to talk to them? I know we rush in the mornings to get to work and we come home and we're looking about the dinner and we are looking about other things. And we are so preoccupied that we have no time for those conversations, regular conversations. Some of us only talk to our children and to people when we are correcting. No, they will not listen to us at that time because you don't have a relationship with them. We have to be talking to them about what they like, play games with them. I remember my mother was always busy in the kitchen, but sometimes if daddy was not available, she'll be playing with me um, cricket and whatever games. My dad was always the one to, to play and to take me to the beach and so on. But as parents, as adults do we talk some of us don't have physical children but what about our youth groups that we have to influence do we talk to the young people at church or the only time they hear us uh, you dress too short you talk too much behave yourself they won't listen to us if that's all we talk about ask them what do you like? How are you doing in school? How are you managing with the whole business of online learning? What are we teaching? And then, of course, as our previous speaker just spoke on, being examples, sometimes the lessons we are giving out is not good. So we tell them, don't talk in church. Don't do this. Don't do that. But we are doing the same things. What are we teaching? What is our example? And I want us to remember as I rush on quickly, not all women will marry or have children, but we can still be that virtuous woman, that exemplary woman, that excellent woman. So when people look at us, are we gossips? Are we a busy body in other people's matters? Some of us, you know, we are so bad, man. Lord, look at me. I'm not getting married. Not not happen for me. I'm getting old. I'm not having any children. But have we asked the Lord? And as we were told earlier, we need to check in. Is God comfortable with us? Some of us are running out. We want to get married and some, but we're not ready for marriage yet. We don't have the right um, characteristics and we are not of a good mind. So when we see somebody else and we hear somebody else getting married, getting engaged, Lord, then I went seeing a she and what about me and so on. Be happy for your sister. Be happy and, and pray that she's making the right choices and that God will lead her. And, you know, if it's his will, they should have children. You see somebody who's pregnant, 
pray about them, pray for them, pray for their unborn children. Because sometimes we block our own blessings because we don't have a good attitude mm -hmm. towards other people. That is what a virtuous woman is all about. You know, we have to make sure that we have the right mindset and that we are right. Be the right kind of woman. And I usually say, be careful about looking for the knight in shining armor. Because to me, when he is when he's that knight in shining armor, he spends a lot of time shining up the armor. He won't have time for you. And you know, we women like to be pampered and we like to be admired and we like that love from our, our, our spouse and that, you know, bigging up and so on. Any knight who have to be shining up his arm and taking care of his horse won't have time for you. So sometimes it's that little poor brother. He might not seem to have anything, but he, he admires you. He loves you. He will kiss your foot bottom. He would, would cook for you and so on. He might not be big, he might not be wealthy, but ask God, is he the right man for me? Some of us who are in ministry, we have to be very careful about the type of man we are looking for because some men, it's a competition. They don't want a woman in ministry because she has to go pray too much and she has to go visit here and she has to be busy doing that. He's not supporting you. He's not going to be praying for you. He's just all for himself. So just be careful about protecting your ministry. Be careful about who you select as a partner in life because you need somebody who will support you who will love you who will respect you who will honor you you know because everything is all together you know we are the men have to be careful of the wives they select and as women we have to be careful because sometimes we are going to be the devil's daughter in law because we're going to pick up a man who is not right for us he's not he's not god's choice so we need to ask what is God's choice for us? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, we can, Sister, Sister Lisa. We can be the devil's daughter in law. You pick the man, wrong man, and him is the devil's son who himself, and he's going to give you problems. And some of us, you know, we, we rush to be married and we want to be married. And we, this, we're all about the wedding and the pretty dress and the party and what have you. But remember that marriage, ladies, is that everyday thing. We have to go to the supermarket. We have to clean the house. We have to wash the clothes. We have to make the bed. It's not all about looking pretty and flashing the ring and having and having legal sex. It's all sometimes about um getting there, praying, and when in turn baby on you. Because so many women can be babies sometimes. Them have a little cooler and the Lord is a big baby. I have to wipe his nose and wipe his bottom and you have to feed him. Those are the realities. You have to go to the market. All of those things are part of what it means to be a wife. All right. So it's not all about flashing and dressing. And, you know, some of us have to, you know, I'm wearing red and black. So he has to be in red and black and I'm wearing blue and gold and so on. I will match up. All right. That is nice. Those are the fringes. But real life says we have got to do real things and live life a real way. There are going to be times when I remember when my husband was alive. There were times that we didn't have much money and it's one party we're sharing for two of us. I will make sure we get, you know, half of the party and sometimes I said, take a bite more of mine. So sometimes it's not always going to be peaches and cream. Sometimes it's going to be rough going. But we have to realize what we are, are about and what we are getting into. And some of us who are already in the marriages, we have to say, God, give me grace. Because someday we know into it and we realize, Jesus, what is this? Lord, deliver me. 
but sometimes he doesn't deliver you out of it but he delivers you through it you grow you develop you are 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 brought up in god you learn to be patient you learn to keep by your mouth and i don't want to get into preaching here because you know time is going when we are a virtuous woman we are excellent so everything we do, we, we make sure it is good and we can look at how proud of ourselves. So you make a meal. You don't pile up the rice and you're serving it. You don't pile up the rice high and the meat on top like watchman and the gravy, you know, dripping off and on the side and the lettuce and the salad doing a slide off of the mountain of the rice. Your meal must be well presented. It's not too salt. It's not sugar. First of all, us have our meals filled with sugar. How we look in taste if we don't know how to cook learn to cook learn to do things excellently we are making a presentation make sure it is well done of course we need to be spiritual not spirited some people feel that to be spiritual is speaking a lot of tongues and shaking that is not spirituality spirituality is to to love the lord it is to, to watch your tongue it's to be kind it's to be loving to exhibit the fruit of the spirit and to also exhibit the the qualities of the of the gifts of the spirit that you god has endowed you with you must pray fast all of those things you must be a capable person intelligent some of us don't read we don't read the papers we don't read books Books, we need to read you need to read and read to know what's happening you need to balance what is feeding you some of us all feeding us is facebook and instagram and whatsapp and so on we need to educate ourselves if we didn't get through school very well let us go back to classes what is it you want so we spoke about making plans and and looking for your goals and so on some of us need to present you want to be a doctor as our first speaker said make sure you have all the subjects that are required to do medicine start saving your money towards it so there are different things that, you know, we need to do to increase our intelligence. We must be virtuous, having that high moral standards. So, you know, we, we can't be too timing and gossiping and um, immoral and sexually promiscuous, whether we do it online or in person. Be your best self, ladies. And if any gentlemen are there, be your best self value yourself ladies value yourself you are not cheap are you cheap don't be cheap are you easily bought as a man yeah like an ice cream skin <laughs> oh, in love me come on now some of them don't even have money my former bishop god bless her memory used to say that love can't go to shop so don't bother take up you know value yourself any man who won't beat you and box you and sometimes we are seeing the signals even before we start we, we get into the relationship we are seeing the signals before we get married him rough you up and embarrass you in front of people now if him not put a ring on your finger and if you not married a missus nothing yet and he is treating you badly open your eye and see look good sisters look good value yourself and also be valuable right the gentleman um in in the passage say oh his wife was valuable to him can do without her when you are not there are you really missed just remember that you are a, the daughter of a king so we don't expect daughters of the king to behave like strege and all 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 skettle talking jamaican hope all the others who are in other parts of the world get it we don't want to be low and demeaning and loud and vulgar and boisterous ladies we are daughters of a king you don't see none of the royalty out the road and even when 
Prince Harry used to be up to his antiques. It was great embarrassment for the royal family. We, you, because you are supposed to stand a certain way, sit a certain way, speak a certain way, behave and react to people a certain way. We're not kettles. And so value yourself, ladies. And I'm begging you, even if you don't feel valuable, because sometimes we, we demean ourselves, you know. We look at ourselves and say, you know, I am not... Oh my, I only have six minutes left. Um, we um are eight. Um, we, we are not valuable and you know, poor me, and I I I grew up poor and so on. But God loves you, He died for you, He gave His blood for you. You are valuable. And let me tell you something: if you even don't feel valuable, you can give God something of value, which is your worth. Your worship, tell him he's worthy of all honor, all praise, all glory. Give him of your time, give him your body. We present ourselves as living sacrifice. Remember the woman with the alabaster box. It was said that she was a woman of ill repute. And maybe even after she met Jesus, she came into, you know, that Lord, I, I, I'm still not good enough, but she brought her best gift. Let's give God something of value, ladies. Give him our worship. Give him our bodies. Give him our time. Give him our creativity. And then we're moving on. Let us be trustworthy. Now, the gentleman could safely trust in his, 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 his wife. All right? And the Matthew 5, 37, so let your yeah, be the yeah and your nay, nay, right? Keep your word. If you are unable to do something, say, I am unable to do it. Or if you promise and you find out I cannot do it anymore, let the person know, you know, I'm having some challenges and I may not be able to fulfill. Don't make people sit down and waiting on you. Keep your word, all right? Don't be a tail bearer. That's what Leviticus 19, 16 is talking. Don't walk on. Keep your mouth. Women are known to be chatterboxes. And we can't keep your mouth. All right? Um, Proverbs 6, 19 speaks about those who sow discord among brethren. And a lot of times sow the discord by our mouth. You hear this? You did see that? You see where the pastor wife for where? And you hear that? And so we are gone. Be trustworthy, man. Some of us, even when we hear a little thing, we come prayer meeting and um, pray for sister so-and-so. Um, I will start to chat out the whole of the lady business that she told us in confidence. I wonder why nobody don't trust us or not tell me nothing now. we never hear what's going on yet. Because we are not trustworthy sisters. We need to be trustworthy. Don't come prayer meeting. If we come and we need to pray, pray for sister so and so there's an issue but god understands just pray if you need and sometimes we need to ask if we are counselors we need to ask people's permission before we can share them story is not your story to share so don't go sharing people's story be do good do good to your husband be an encourager some of us really discourage our husbands and and our partners we never find nothing good to say yet. Everything will us find every fault. I will wonder why our marriages don't go well. Look here, man. We need to start looking at our husbands. Why did we marry him in the first place? In the tall, dark, and handsome, try to build upon that. Encourage that. And, you know, fix him up nice. So him keep tall, dark, and handsome. So you have something nice to hold on. Some of us, we don't find anything good. Sometimes the husband is sloppy, but he's a good cook. Tell him so. You know, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Open your mouth. Let us talk to your friend and say, boy, I'm so and so, but he can't cook. Tell the husband so him can feel good. And every time him cook at it, sweet you, lick your finger. Well, not ideal at this time. But tell him, I enjoy when you cook. I enjoy when you wash up the dishes. I enjoy when you clean the yard. Comfort and encourage. Do good and speak well. And also help others, help the poor, help the needy. Some of us are very stingy. 
We don't give away prayers. We don't give away nothing. Ladies, if you want God to bless you, begin to open your hands and really just try to go. Try to go and help people, you know, that you can. You don't have to give a whole lot of money and a whole lot of this. But sometimes somebody needing a hundred dollars with a bus fare. Sometimes it might be a little pound of sugar and extra some of us buy. And we can, you know, manage or we spend our money. Be industrious. And I know um, others have been talking about doing business. All right, be creative. Use your hand and your mind. We all can't sew and make tapestry and all that like the lady in the scripture did. But some of us can write books. We can write songs. We can encourage people. We can write letters of encouragement. We can really work hard. Don't be lazy. Don't be shiftless. Don't um, seek business opportunities. Learn to invest. Sometimes we might start a business and it fail. It is said that most businesses fail when they start, but don't give up. Many of the successful business people of our time have had their buck foot and fall down and losses, but they learn from it and go on. So we need to learn to invest. We need to learn to save, learn to not to just be a spendthrift. Many of our older mothers used to do very well because them used to know and you want to all oh, them all years have money because them learn every out of the little money where them get them learn to spend find out go to the best place to shop that is ideal don't go and just buy at the nearest shop for the highest price learn to go to coronation market or whichever other markets you can and walk around and look for the best quality thing at the at the most reasonable price not asking you to buy a riffraff not asking you to not dress well and so on, but have an intention. So if you plan to go to school, start to save. If you plan to have money for a business, start to save. Nobody will want to come alongside you and invest in your business. If every minute you buy a new pair of shoes and a, the most expensive bag and, and all of that, because people are going to say, no, Sasha, go spend all my money for she, not on the business. So you need to be industrious. You have to manage your time well. Always have a plan that was said before. So sometimes we need to make checklists, write down. What do I need to do today? How much time should I spend on it? Wake early. You can't have a ton load of things to do and get up 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock in the day. I always figure get up early, get your thing done. And if anything, you're going to lie down back and catch a sleep wake early rain falling get up early if you have clothes to wash wash it overnight wash it early in the morning put it out make it go and blow so by the time the rain start to fall 12 1 o'clock it at least blow out and you can take it up one of the good things about waking early is to start your day with prayer on not disturbed undisturbed because, you know, once you get up and people start walk out the road and chat and call to each other and music start to play, you know, that early morning. So the Bible says that the woman gets up early and looks about her, her children. She looks about her spiritual well-being. And you, it, you, I can tell you, when you start your day with Bible reading and prayer, you find and you put all of your things before the Lord, you're going to find that your day will go better than it did so cut out the time wasters sometimes i don't know you, you go on on whatsapp and you answer this your message and by the time you answer the person answer back and you just find yourself and before you know it half hours gone and we're on facebook reading people thing and we're commenting here and hours gone sometimes it's the phone calls the television the idle talk we have to learn to manage our time well. Take care of yourself. So you heard about, you know, the beautification. You heard about the mind care. You heard about the planning and so on. So take care of yourself spiritually. Be strong. Pray. Read your Bible fast. Some of us love our bellies too much. Sometimes we have to put away 
food, put away television, put away social media, put away of me god fasting and we can fellowship some of us are mean spirited you know and, and we go to church and i only go to receive from the lord no sometimes when we go we, we see a little sister or a little brother look like the world is on them shoulder and go alongside you can't hug people now but say brother how are you you don't look too bright and I will leave a word of encouragement. Bless somebody with a testimony. Encourage somebody. And boy, you know, I was in that situation and God delivered me. Fellowship. Of course, learn to relax. Think good thoughts. Clear your mind. Deep breathe in. Get rid of depression. And if it's really bad, as our psychologist said, you know, get help. Talk to somebody else. Begin to tell the Lord, I am depressed. And I sometimes it's a spiritual depression and you need to say, I rebuke the spirit of depression. I cast it out of my body. Every spirit of Oshaya, every spirit of suicide, every spirit of feeling I'm worthless, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Sometimes we have to rebuke that spirit as we learn to relax. Exercise, walk, stretch lift weights do something skip swim we have to exercise to make sure we are physically strong because when we are physically strong we can be mentally strong and it helps our spirit man when we are weak physically you know the devil come and him just box the boat and you can't fight spiritual warfare if you're not physically well so you also have to sleep adequately Make sure you are getting sleep and eat a balanced diet. Now, your plate is supposed to look like one third. A third of carbohydrates, a third of your protein, and a third of your vegetables and minerals and so on. So please eat well. And we're coming down. Learn to respect yourself. Say so you no know bad behavior out of road, not anything that you're going to be ashamed of. Remember, you are Jesus' child. So always have respect for yourself and cause respect to come to those around you. Because sometimes the way we behave, we embarrass everybody. We embarrass the, ourselves, our family, our workplaces, our community where we live with, our church, and we embarrass Christ. Please, when our husband sits in the gate and meet people, even not supposed to hang down him head and say, Lord Jesus, what am I talking about me now? And what my wife do this time? No, we need to cause them to say, boy, you know, we're so proud of your brother, we're proud of your wife. Don't make your church embarrassed. Because some of us fight at church. I will fight at the market. I will go on bad. I will cuss in our community. We need not to bring shame, but have respect. Speak with wisdom and kindness. So our speech must be with grace. All right? We must exhibit love because love is kind. And when we do have wisdom, ask it of God. James 1, 5. Be careful, of course, what is said, especially to children. Some of us, we remember life and death is in the power of the tongue. And when we curse them and say, you will never come out to anything and you are worthless. And some of us, even as adults, are working and laboring under those, those curses from teachers, from, from our parents, from our granny, from other authority figures. Some of us are laboring under curses from even our pastors in our churches. And we need to, we, Lord, loose me of those curses in Jesus' name. Be careful, you know, so we don't want to curse our children. And especially if you are in the prophetic and you are in ministry and God has anointed your mouth, be very careful what you say to people because it will come to pass. Sometimes we just say things flippantly. Lord, Mrs., you're going to broke like church mouse. And we bring a curse on others. We need to speak with wisdom and kindness. And finally, we need to fear the Lord. 
because beauty and youth will pass away. No matter how much makeup we put on, no matter how we do facelift, no matter how we do all kind of something, one day we are going to get old and wrinkled. And if we don't get old and wrinkled, we are going to die if the Lord doesn't come before. But we want the favor of the Lord to be upon us, to reward us, to last forever. So, you know, we, we are blessed and that we will have good works being our legacy. You know, there's a woman called Dorcas or Tabitha or Tabitha in Acts. 9 36 to 40 and when she died it was bawling because you know she had a good legacy she looked after the poor and because of her good works they brought it to to peter and he prayed over her and she was actually raised from the dead god is going to bless your good works god is going to bless what you do god will bless your prayers god will reward everything that you do sisters in christ phenomenal women may uh, may we pattern the example of of um this proverbs 31 woman in this in this 21st century we can do it we can be blessed we can be a blessing to others we can succeed bless you bless you bless you hallelujah Thank you.